Hello, this is Frank Falvey with Frank Presents. And today, Steve Sherlock with Franklin Matters and myself are combining resources to do an interview with Mr. Jim Gimbley of the Gimbley Funeral Home. Uh, Steve, just briefly say, what, what is Franklin Matters? Franklin Matters is uh, digital news uh, that pairs with Franklin TV, Franklin Radio, so we get to share <coughs> what's happening on the TV and on the radio, as well as in the news we report uh, on uh, the town council, the school committee, f technically following the money um, and sharing the info f as the community service. Great. Jim, you've been in the uh, uh, funeral home business now for uh, 50 years, is it? Yes. And uh, you're the uh, owner of uh, the funeral home, which used to be the Jackson Funeral Home. Correct. And uh, so the home goes how far back? Uh, it actually became a funeral home in the late 1940s. It was started by the Ro Roberts Funeral Home from Medfield. He had it for a very short period from understand, and then he sold it to the Pardo Funeral Home in Woonsocket. And they had it for just a couple years, and then Mr. Jackson bought it in 1954. And then uh -huh. he had it from there until I purchased it from him in 1984. What, what would you say, what does the funeral home provide, or what is its services? Uh, funeral homes, true funeral homes provide everything, dear dear, from, you know, assisting people when, again, someone's passed away, offering them all kinds of different ways of handling, you know, memorialization, calling hours, whatever they want to do. Uh, they interface with everybody from whatever news media, if there's nowadays we're talking about, it might just be on the interline, dealing with uh, cemeteries, churches, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve has been asked by some seniors mm -hmm. uh, some questions that they would like to know the answers to. Yeah, and I think let's start at the beginning. So somebody does pass, unfortunately, and mm -hmm. then they contact you. Is that really that's probably not the best time to contact you. Is, do you do cover that pre-planning to? We do a lot. We do a lot. Funeral homes now, throughout the country, do it a lot of it. A lot of it's done nowadays because of sadly people going in nursing homes. Right. Uh, and they call it a spend down before the state will pick up the uh, coverage. Coverage. Yep. So they're told, and they're told that's something you can legally do. So they call funeral homes up. Set there. aside the money to right. cover those. So they yeah. contact funeral homes a lot of times because of that. Mm -hmm. There are people that just simply, I think they're very brave, just decide they want to come and sit across from a funeral director and talk about their own right. funeral plans. Yes. But uh, that's generally when we hear it. And then there are other people that just simply, there's been a death and they've never really thought about doing anything and then they just call out of mm -hmm. when they need us. Right. Yeah, and I think is some of what we were talking about uh, before going on air, but you're, you've are you got a breadth of services and people can really kind of pick and choose depending upon what they're really looking for. Right. Funeral homes, uh, and I'll say it, f small town funeral homes especially, like the two in this town, they're part of the neighborhood. They're not, it's not prepackaged. They right. don't try to, they don't try to, I hate to use the word, upsell. They, they're not on commission. They're not on all kinds mm -hmm. of things. So they pretty much, and, and I know a lot of funeral directors, they sit back and try to just give you options, but they'll also see what do you want to do. Sure. So you try to make it so they're guiding you and they're guiding them with some advice and mm -hmm. saying you could do this, you can't do that, and let them make some decisions. Right. So clearly the family uh, or interested party is going to have to make some decisions. Uh, one of the right. key decisions, I think, would be are you going to have a burial or are you going to have one of the other cremation or whatever sure. services memorials. Mm -hmm. um, are there uh, grave sites still available in the Franklin uh, uh, plots? I'll go through the two cemeteries <laughs> that are active. And Union Street, which I've always found interesting, there is still a lot. There's actually about two acres that has never been developed, and there are houses across from it. And we've always been saying someday they'll run out of the room and where they're presently using, mm -hmm. and they're going to come in there with you know, tree companies and take down all those woods, and people right. are going to say, that's a cemetery. Uh, St. Mary's has an awful lot of ra land. They, okay. they, they could go, I've been told, probably another 100 years. This, this town's really well equipped. Right, yeah. okay. 
That's good. And then yep. clearly that's the plot size. That's the plot size. And now because of, I think you alluded to, uh, cremations, sure. that's using less space. And a lot of cemeteries, St. Mary's has already set the col uh, columbariums where they can put the ashes right into the, the urns walls. into right. a smaller vault, but right. still a right. space. Right into there. That's taking up less space. And a lot of cemeteries are doing that. I was talking to someone the other day, and I was a little surprised the cemetery's going to go forward with that, too. Mm -hmm. But that's, a, that's the issue of uh, cemetery space is not an issue right here. So cemetery space is not an issue. Clearly, there are some religions that foster one or the other. There's some that don't like the cremation, from what I understand. So the people have to make those decisions in terms of what they're going to want to do. But you're Correct. there to assist them in terms of how right. whichever choose right. the most, choice they make. Most families, most religions really don't stop you from cremation. I guess okay. it's becoming, it was in the days gone by, uh, but there's not too many uh, religions right now. I actually was talking to my nephew who used to work for the Jewish Shiromes, and uh, they're starting to see that non-Orthodox, they're starting to have cremations. So, mm -hmm. And it's becoming more prevalent. Right. Yep. So then continuing down kind of the plot size, then you get into the casket. And I'm sure from what I've understood, there are a variety of, you know, high-end caskets, if you will, versus simpler caskets right. um, for purchase, as well as I think there's kind of a rent just for the day, too. There is, there is uh, like I said to you before, there is most funeral homes of my size. Mm -hmm. They're not on commission or whatever. You're right. making some money, but there is... They're not trying to sell. People wouldn't do it anyways, but they never were pushing expensive caskets. Right. So there's a variety, and it's usually the families just look and see what they want. Uh, the rental casket you've mentioned, that's a casket to use specifically when they want to have a viewing or, not, or a closed casket, but they want to have some type of service with the body present okay. and then cremation because you cannot take the container that's inside to a burial at the cemetery because it would not, uh, it's not appropriate. Right, okay. That's the cemetery rules. Sure. But that's that's used too. Mm -hmm. It didn't exist that I knew of 25 years ago. Well, and that I think to the extent that you've been with the business for 50 years, you've seen a number of those changes yeah. and so, perhaps yeah. more recently coming out of COVID as well with some of the protocols and then kind of defining the new normal. There has been. Since when COVID, which, came in with everybody unexpected how to deal with it, uh, that you couldn't have so many people in a room, you sure. couldn't go to churches, things like that. People were that, which I think having some type of, some people say now call it celebration of life, but I think letting people get together, because again, nowadays everybody's so busy and you hear it all the time, well, it's, it's the only time we see is at funerals and weddings. Right. Um, they weren't able to do that. And that became, I think, frustrating, but then people got a little I don't want to say comfortable, I'm not sure how to deal with it, but we've seen, and it seems like it's still going on, less of the old traditional visiting hours, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes not even so much services. Right. It's, it has changed, especially because of COVID. Yeah, and I think the other factor, at least from my own kind of family relationships, because uh, my father unfortunately had passed away years ago, so we did in that time kind of the standard viewing services, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But in some of the ones more recently, um, th because people are spread, they're not kind of in the same area anymore. They're much more, you know, multiple states. So from a travel perspective, the timing, you know, when do you do it? Do you, it so in some cases, they've had to do it and then delay it to kind of a weekend to allow f folks from out of state to travel. And that's part of, I'm sure, some of the family it, type decisions. It is. And usually, again, I'll talk for myself, but I know most funeral homes would say, it's totally always back to the family. Mm -hmm. And you say, you're not in any rush. Right. So, if you're, so if, when they know they want to do it, usually you know, mm -hmm. they may have to, with scheduling of other things. Sure. Uh, but that's people, I, we've seen that, especially mm -hmm. the weekends. People a lot try to do things on the weekend, yeah. which is interesting because of days off and things like that. Sure. For friends. Yep. So that, that's a big difference in the old days. It just was everything stopped, mm -hmm. but now it doesn't. Now you wait. Yeah. And then again, depending upon uh, the volume, perhaps, or the, you know, the expected volume of a particular uh, celebration, the number of hours, whether it's four hours or two hours, 
that can develop the line, et cetera, and then you have to manage that and obviously manage that with the family and being respectful of everybody's. And you I do, think most people, most people are understanding in those circumstances. Yeah, I, there's been incredibly large calling hours, mm -hmm. and uh, people are usually very, you know, understanding, like you said, that, okay, we may have to wait in line for an hour. They don't mind. Mm -hmm. they, they do it. And, um, you know, you try to give people, if they're thinking, I really don't want to do much, yeah, I think you should, you maybe might say, you know, they're very popular, maybe do something, well, we didn't want to do it. Right. But ultimately, usually I've seen when people do it, they always afterwards said, that was, a, I'm glad we did something. Sure. And uh, so I think it's the one thing, I don't care if they do it at a funeral home or wherever, I think it's really good to stop, have some type of get together so mm -hmm. people can talk, re reminisce, sure. and just think about everything. Yep. And again, everything seems to be moving so fast. It's sort of like a break that it happens because you're yeah. not going to be able to say, oh, I want to do this later on. Mm -hmm. This is when it's going to happen. Yeah, and some of the technology pieces um, I've seen more recently. It used to be kind of uh, kind of a picture board. You know, you'd have the mm -hmm. the old Polaroids, et cetera, kind of stuck up. But now you're getting more of a digital display. Yeah, I, as you, I told you, I'm not very uh, computer literate. <laughs> so you have others to do that for you. <laughs> thank God. Um, yeah, the videos it become and it's wonderful. They can download hundreds of pictures. They can pick music, a background. Uh, they can inter, you know, embed it right on the online obituaries, mm -hmm. play it during the visiting hours, they get take it home, they can keep looking at it on forever. Sure. And people really enjoy it. Yep. And they enjoy it afterwards. And that's great. And that's yeah, better than the old fashioned come in and <laughs> like you attack them on the wall. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I know we've preparing for my father's he he was the old Irishman with all due respect <laughs> to the other faiths uh, and uh, nationalities but he was the old Irishman he said, just put me in a corner put a keg in the other corner and have everybody have a conversation <laughs> respectfully we didn't quite do that but we, we still had a good family gathering do you get some of those requests as well too where just you know they're looking for advice as right. to what they do I will sort of, but I never tell them to do anything. Funeral right. homes shouldn't, and they don't usually tell them. Right. But if some family says, we really don't want to do anything, or mm -hmm. we'll handle it ourselves, or whatever, um, you don't want, because I think, uh, and again, I'll say for a small town funeral homes, we're not like these big corporations. Sure. The idea is, uh, we're not trying to sell you into spending money on doing things, and I think people always have, they've got this image of funeral homes that are all there to, you know, make money and take your money and probably he's trying to talk us into do this so he can make some money. But mm -hmm. again, it isn't. It's we're just saying, you know, well, do what you want, but I think you should do something. Because afterwards they may end up having, I think, some issues if they never got together and just stayed home just themselves and just mm -hmm. had their family together so they could reminisce. Right. I just think it's important. Yep. And that's never going to go away. Yeah. I hesitate to talk, you know, you mentioned money a couple of times, and I hesitate to get into money because at this point in time where, given the economic uncertainty and yep. some of the inflations, but at least in terms of kind of a ballpark, so somebody wants to come in and start doing kind of pre-planning in mm -hmm. an ideal case, call them probably in the 50s or 60s, mm -hmm. do you have a ballpark for what at least they should start setting aside or planning for accordingly? If you're on this area here, I would say the cemetery is a big part of what I call it an iceberg. Okay. Because if they're staying in the Franklin area, it's still fairly inexpensive. People might say that's not inexpensive. But to purchase a grave in the cemeteries out here is between $1,000 and $1,500. Mm -hmm. That's to purchase one grave. Okay. The idea is that's something and we'll keep going up. Yeah, from um, there. Right, and then the opening. This is, the idea is I would tell people if they're that young, they probably should be at least minimally putting aside at least $10,000, mm -hmm. but don't do it completely with a funeral. I think I've always said, put that with your local bank in a CD yeah. and call it your rainy day account. Don't tie it up because you don't really, hopefully won't need it for decades and you may need right. use it for something else. Yeah. But that, it's cremation's much less expensive. Sure. But the idea is, that's a good number, I think, right now. Boston is a whole other world. Boston Cemetery is just to open, as they call it, dig a grave. It's about $3,000. Wow. Yeah. And buying it 
is a lot. Mm -hmm. So sure. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can get way out of it. Good. Yeah. So planning, budgeting, um, and then the biggest yeah. five. When we say planning, I don't want planning. The biggest thing is, and I've always told, I tell people. Put down what you want to do so your family knows. Yeah, at least in kind of a, do this, don't right. do that. Because if, if you write it down, most family members will go along with what you've said. Mm -hmm. So they're not questioning, did he want to do this, did he want to do that? Did yours, if you actually, it's like making out a will, but you put down, these are the things I'd really like to have happen. Mm -hmm. It's It helps the families. Sure. You know, so you, they're not, what is? what should we do? Yeah, they're not just kind of spitballing and winging it at the, at the last minute when under the emotional circumstances, see <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. You just don't know. Yeah. yeah. Am I yeah. doing the right thing? Right. Well, you're doing what he told you or she told you she wanted. True. That's, yeah. that's more important than anything. Yeah. The Franklin <coughs> has a third cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, is that now closed and no longer active? Very interesting that you bring that up. I got a call two months ago from some family that could prove that they still have a graves up there. They are coming after 4th of July with their mother's urn, and they could prove to the people in the town government that they still have ownership, and uh, they are going to bury the ashes up there. The cemetery is not, does not have graves. They are calling it inactive, but if you can prove this, but they, I think it's coming to an end. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, but I was just there yesterday finding this grave so the person could figure out where to put, uh, we can dig the grave. Yeah, right. But yeah, it's inactive. Who takes care of that? Uh, and, and could you describe for the people where it is? Okay, it's on Green Street. Green Street, yeah. Uh, it's, the town will cut the grass. I'm not sure if they cut it two or three times a year. That's about it. Uh, there hasn't been a full burial in a while. On um, this case, they just, the person that takes care of digging graves in the other cemeteries um, they're going to go down there and do this hole for this family. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very simple. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, it's not going to be. It's it's a cemetery that will be there forever because it has to be. Sure. But it's, it's to all intents and purposes what they've told the town minister is that it's an inactive cemetery. Right. Yeah. 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 I found it once upon a time when my daughter, I think she was in the eighth grade, middle school. They did a uh, scavenger hunt, and that's one of the clues led us there. And I was like. There's a cemetery here, <laughs> you know. The uh, going back to some of the basics, if if someone passes away mm -hmm. unexpectedly in their home, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is you still need to call the police first. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah. Uh, you would. The requirements are, in theory, if you found someone, you wouldn't call a funeral home because. We would probably be right off the bat said, um, who's there? What you should be doing is call 911. They would send the paramedics and yeah. the police make a response. Uh, if it's very obvious, and I'm talking about obviously a natural death, um, they, paramedics can, will say the person has passed. Mm -hmm. Then they, by law, they call the medical examiner's office in Boston. They generally, they're talking, the police are talking to the family members. Uh, see if the person's had some type of medical issues, mm -hmm. history, age, and they're talking to the medical examiner in Boston. And then they make a determination, uh, should they get involved? If the person's elderly and, or had real health issues, a lot of times they'll, it's, un, it's not like TV, they, will, they call it waiving it. And, they, and what they do is that means the medical examiner writes down the time they were contacted and that's they're done. And then uh, the family would tell the police who have to cannot leave until a funeral home shows up what funeral home they want. Mm -hmm. And then funeral home would come and bring the person who's passed away back to the funeral home. And then the next, I call it work day because doctors don't work on weekends sure. or nights. Right. We would call the primary care doctor of that person, inform them that their patient has passed away, the medical examiner has waived things, and that they are required to make out a death certificate. No doctor ever gets in, sees the person they look up in the medical files what they were treating them for, and with that time that the paramedics got there and called the medical examiner, that's considered the time of death. Okay. And that's how it goes down. Right. It's but there still isn't a, somebody has, to, and somebody is uh, slotted to 
create that official document. And obviously, if there's complications, then there's further investigation. Correct. If there's anything, if they're anything they're questioning, someone's young or something, or quite, the American Center will just say, okay, they'll send their people out from Boston and bring them back to the Boston American Center facility and do an examination. Mm -hmm. And they do that, but they're doing more of this on the other side. Right. Because if it's, they just don't want to get that involved. They're too busy. Yeah. Who, what, what relationship precedes all others in determining uh, how the, the final arrangements will be made? Uh, in other words, uh, if, if this is a, uh, a mother and the father mm -hmm. and the husband has passed away, there's three or four children, uh, how does the law decide, or is there a, a legal precedent as to who should be uh, making the final arrangements? But the spot, first off, the, I'm not sure totally how legal on certain parts of it, but if there's a living spouse, the spouse is in charge. If the one spouse is deceased and now it's the other, other the children are. Uh, hopefully, uh, they get along and they There's can come to some agreement. Yeah. And that, that, that can get, usually people rise to a, a good level and it takes care of it. Um, if there's an interesting part, if there's someone's passed away and um, family's divorced, and there are minor children, this is where the medical examiner gets involved, especially if someone's being cremated, they have to have signatures from people in charge if it was in a divorce, the divorced father because they're looking out for the well-being of the children of that per woman that passed mm. away, vice versa. Um, they are very careful with that, but usually it's, you hope everybody can come to some consensus. Yeah. One of my experiences from traveling uh, outside of the country is that I usually always am asked if I want to buy uh, insurance, either for uh, health insurance, <coughs> if I have a medical mm -hmm. uh, condition, or if I pass away in, in a foreign country. Hmm. Uh, what, 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 have you run into that situation? Or I've had several opinion? people pass away out of country. I went just this year in Mexico, I remember. Uh, I've never heard, I've never known anybody actually purchase insurance, mm -hmm. but it's just they have to take care of it at that, that level with the country they are. You know, we get involved, the funerals in America, when we, be going to accept it at the airport, say, mm -hmm. uh, but they would be dealing with the country they're in and the funeral home of that country. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but but the cost of that is going to be probably, it, honestly, it, they would probably because they probably will know they'd never see you again. They'd probably say, "Give me a credit card." Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, do what? Give me a credit card. Yeah. 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 Uh, so sometimes maybe uh, having a cremation in a foreign country. Uh, would be uh, less expensive? Definitely, yep. And that might be what they would, re they'd ask you anyways. And I'm guessing a lot of those funeral homes in that country might actually maybe even suggest it to you because again, they want to make sure they're getting paid. Mm -hmm. I, hate, I hate to say it to yours. Well, and f for recent travel experience, uh, we had a cruise along Greenland. In Greenland, because it's mostly ice, there's no burials mm -hmm. if you're not native. <laughs> So they did. They were su suggesting expatriation insurance to cover it in that eventuality because your ultimate choice was you're not going to stay here. <laughs> you're going to yeah. go somewhere, and it's going to cost some money. So how do you want to pay for it? So yeah, you've got a choice: yeah, do right. covering the insurance or putting up a credit card. Okay. Yeah. In, in if the person, uh, I have family in Florida, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I have a family cemetery at Forest Hills want to talk about money <laughs> uh, and huge sums of money, even to, as you say, open, open the grave. Um, we're talking about significant large sums of... Uh, significant. Um, significant large sums of money. Uh, but uh, I I if I wanted uh, to have, if someone passed away, one of my relatives passed away in Florida, again, to bring them, either by air or by car, mm -hmm. up here, my in 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 instinct is that that almost is cost prohibitive. No, I, I honestly, I just did it this morning. I just was at Green Airport for 
a lady that passed away in Florida. Um, the only, it's minimal, the charges from down there, and then it's the f price of a ticket uh, might be six, seven hundred dollars. That's it. Right. And to be honest, it's very, it's not really that. Now it is good to travel. Yeah. It's uh, not a whole lot different than if someone died right up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Small oh. Place, and they really uh, are very nice, the airports, <coughs> about handling everything. They do it in a really tasteful manner. And uh, it is not, it's not, people think it is. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've heard people say, uh, my God, it cost me so much to get up myself because when you're buying a ticket at the last sure. minute, they yeah. really hit you. Right. But this is, sort of say, Air Cargo. Right. So there's a, they have this a flat rate. Special rate. So it's really not an issue. So the, the, the transporting the casket by ear is not that. Uh, okay. That's very easy. The um, rules about a burial in, in, a, in a plot uh, I know in Forest Hills, right? I can only have uh, I have can have four coffins, two on two, mm -hmm. or for each place of a coffin, I can have four urns. Okay. Uh, w w is that common, or what? What is the Union Street? Okay, out mm -hmm. here they don't do your term with there. They call that double deep. They don't sell graves uh, double on top of each other. So uh, you can bury in the both cemeteries in this town, most towns that I know of, uh, you can have a full burial in the casket. If you had two graves, one burial, one burial, and they allow you to put one container of, of cremains on top of that each grave. If you were both, if you were having cremation, uh, the cemeteries here uh, will let you do two burials of ashes per grave. That four, is, mm -hmm. I think they're trying to make money because they, they don't have a lot of graves left at Forest Hills. So I think by upping that to four, that's I've never heard that number. That's a yeah. lot. Trying to utilize capacity. Because also the headstone, there's only so much room on a stone to put the names. That sure. would be. Yeah, I can't have a headstone. Okay. It's about so. Um, uh, I can't have a raised headstone. Right, flat Let me qualify marker. that. Okay. I can have a okay. flat one. Hmm. Um, in, in a in a burial with a, a coffin. Mm -hmm. There's a requirement, as I understand, for a cement right. uh, container. Mm -hmm. uh, without getting into specific prices, right, I have a sense that even here in Franklin, the cost of a burial compared to the cost of a cremation is probably significantly higher. It's probably going to be, in Frank, I would say it's probably going to be about two to three thousand dollars more. For, oh, is that all? That's all. And the only reason about the cement container is just, you know, because uh, you're into history. Before World War II, they were digging all the graves by hand. Then uh, backhoes started to come into existence. And in the old days, most people were buried even in wooden caskets. Mm -hmm. Well, they started using the backhoes because obviously it's nice and easy. But it was going over the wooden things and putting in these big Dense. divots. Yeah. And that was costing you, they were charging $25 to dig a grave, but it was costing them $30 a man hours to fill in all the ruts. Mm. So these cement containers that always existed, and I can only talk about Massachusetts, pretty quickly, it's not a law, but cemeteries, each cemetery just said, no, we we're going to make you required to use this. And you have to use them, and it's made it so that the ground doesn't uh, collapse in. Sure. And they can keep using the backhoes. Mm -hmm. And like if you go to like the National Cemetery in Bourne, they use a, they they're all cement containers, but they're not a sealed vault, but they're reinforced concrete. But it handles what they need to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it is a police escort mm -hmm. to the church or the cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, is that some sort of town requirement, or no. is that an option of the people making the arrangements? No, we funeral homes. In this town, I think in most towns, you call the police department up and uh, you say we have a funeral going from the funeral home to a cemetery or a church. <clears throat> if they're available, they will come uh, and do it. Uh, it's a courtesy. It's also, I'll say it the way I heard it from in another town, several towns away some years ago, from the police chief. Uh, people never usually ever call the police in their whole life of living in a town and paying taxes. Now the person's family members passed away, 
and he says, it's really good, I hate to say PR, but that it is what it is. We'll send the cruiser to that funeral home and escort it to the church and to the cemetery. Uh, I used to drive limousines a lot. You hear the people going, oh, that's so nice. Did yours? They thought so well of the police department for doing that, mm -hmm. it's, and it's a courtesy. Uh, in Boston, they don't do courtesies. You pay for a detail. Right. But out here in the small towns, it's still small towns. Uh, they do it if you call as a courtesy, and it's really nice. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful, too, because the way people drive nowadays, it's nice to have <coughs> those lights in front of you. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in Franklin uh, around funerals that are just nice neighborly things that people do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great. This town, I'll say a thing and I'll give the kudos to deserve the Elks were doing it. Uh, it's the only town I've ever known that did it. If someone's a veteran, we call up. We were doing it through the Elks, and there's some other gentlemen now are starting to help out. Mm -hmm. the, we'll put the flags out, and you say someone's a veteran, down sure. through the center of town right. for every person that served. It's really kind of cool. Yeah. And I don't know, know of any town that does that, but it makes it still feel like you're in a really small town. Sure. And that they care. Yep. And God bless the Elks for mm -hmm. doing that. There's a lot of a lot of <clears throat> folks stepped up to do that. Yep. Yeah. There's been a transition recently, but yeah, very, it's, very it's recent, still yeah. it's still happening. Mm -hmm. I, I can remember as a kid. I grew up in Forest Hills in uh, Boston, on uh, near Walk Hill Street, and the Italian ladies on Memorial Day would be walking up with picnic baskets, dressed in black, and their whole family, and they would go to one of the cemeteries, and there's many in that area, and literally sit on the gravesite and have a picnic lunch. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Boy, things have changed. <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> things have changed. <clears throat> what, what not, I mean, I now have a sense that the cemetery used to be a place of remembrance of the individual. Mm -hmm. Now I look around and I see where the person died, particularly if it was an accident, seems now to be coming up the place of remembrance. In, in Irish uh, history, uh, going back to like 1000 AD, 600 AD, there was this saint tradition of finding the place of resurrection. So the place where you died would be the place where you would be resurrected from. And I see this almost going back, uh, this tradition that has grown over the years, including uh, on the interchange of uh, uh, 95 and 495 with a trooper. The I was just there today. Yeah. today. Are yeah. still there. Right. And I, I'm trying to remember, is that was that trooper Berry that the bridge is named after here in Franklin? I'm not sure. I don't know. what I've seen the boots there. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm not sure it's if that's It's been there for a few years. Few years. But, yeah, because yeah, yeah. there was more of a kind of the temporary memorial gathering of flowers and then the formal arrangement because it's a nice metal piece that has the, sh the boots on right. with the stake yeah. and the name tag. And, yeah. and yeah. you can travel 495 or major highways, whatever, and there are now permanent crosses. Yeah, that mm -hmm. you too. See. Yep. Sure. So has, has that changed uh, the places of remembrance, do you think? I think some people do that again because they've seen it. I, don't, I still believe most times it is still a cemetery where there's some type of uh, stone memorial or something. Uh, but I've seen, we all see them when we drive the highways. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I don't know, it's not that prevalent, but it's, it's definitely you see it some places out there. Mm -hmm. It's usually because of a tragedy. But yeah, I. Now, a lot of people are not Christians. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we Probably the town of Franklin is, is certainly more uh, not of a, of a Christian mm -hmm. or a Jewish faith. They're more uh, secular. Mm -hmm. um, so what what is happening, I see, is I've had some relatives recently, okay, that there's, n there's just simply been a quiet burial and there has never ever been any kind of remembrance. Mm -hmm. From, a, from a, a religious point of view, I think we almost need 
some place of remembrance. Uh, there's this wonderful program now on uh, Franklin Radio, 102.9 here at WFPR, with uh, uh, R uh, Reverend Jacob uh, Drucker, the United Methodist pastor, uh, R Rabbi Tom Albert, the uh, rabbi here, and I believe it is a lady from the Federated Church, mm -hmm. uh, the pastor of the Federated right. Church. And they now are having these wonderful discussions. And the recent one this month is on death. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about uh, the different religious perspectives. Um, but you, you must, when someone comes in, you must be faced with, you know, first uh, learning kind of who they are. Who the individual uh, that 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 you're going to be uh, uh, making the arrangements for, who the people are that uh, are are before you that want to make these arrangements. You try to listen. Yeah. And I try to get, and again with any, not just a funeral. If you try sit back and listen, let other people talk, you kind of get a sense, uh, and. Uh, like say, the religious part of it is definitely changed because we see it at all the churches. Where I live, I live real close to St. Mary's Church. It's not as busy. They've cut out some masses. Federated Church, I, we see it. It's mm -hmm. in America. Right. Uh, not where my daughter lives in Tennessee. She's out and up in the up, way up in the Smoky Mountains, and it's still very active, the right. churches. Yeah. But um, people don't. They just don't want, and it's not mine to say it. I've, we see a lot of times where people don't ask for clergy. They do something in the funeral home and literally they might just get, let it be opened up to the family and friends to speak about the person. Mm -hmm. It's not mine to uh, put my ideas into that. That's, right. But they're doing it the way they like and it feel it's appropriate. And mm -hmm. That's great. When they do nothing, that's sad, but again, you don't say anything. You can't say, well, you really should do something. But you hope that they want to do something, mm -hmm. but that's not. How, how, much of, how much of the funeral arrangements do you think uh, cost enters in to a high degree of, of what people are going to do? Uh, when people say it's not about the money, it's usually about the money. <laughs> But it's just how, what they feel they want to do. It's like I've said, I th uh, I'm dealing with a wedding coming up soon with one of my daughters. Um, funerals are nothing like a wedding, expense-wise, with almost anything, painting a house, nothing like that. The year is, uh, people can do things really pretty, re very reasonably. Mm -hmm. I think people would be shocked. But again, people, a lot of times, don't want to spend any money if they can help it. And... Um, they, I mean, if you said you, it was going to be a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars, they don't want to even do that. Hmm. It's just, uh, but they won't say that. Sometimes they'll just simply say, "Well, that's what the person wanted to do." Yeah. Come but up with another reason. We yeah. Just use it. yeah. But, yeah. Social, uh, I think it's social security. Or there used to be a two hundred and fifty dollar death penalty. Two hundred fifty five dollars. It's been since the depression. The same amount, and they. People always say it's insulting me to call it the burial allowance because you were just mentioned. I'm picking on your cemetery, Forest Hills. Two hundred fifty-five dollars doesn't go a whole lot towards digging a grave at Forest Hills, and they only give it now. They changed it in the '70s. They only give that amount if there's a living spouse. So, when the spouse has died, next time death, so death benefit doesn't come. And if you had been someone that never were married, made a million dollars every year. You just start to collect Social Security. Oh, they okay. Don't, they don't get it either. Yeah. They've really just they're because because they're, they're in issues of money with Social Security, but you, that's not going to help at all. That must no. have been a recent change in the seventies. They mm -hmm. only give it now to the living spouse if there's a living spouse. So if, if it's your mother or father, you don't get the two hundred and fifty dollars. No, if your father was still alive when your mother died, but no, if no. Yeah, right. if if if. Yeah, if the your mother passed away it. and then your father passed away, no one nothing. gets it. Nothing. Right. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. 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 And they used to prorate the checks. Nothing about funerals, but if you lived three quarters of a month, they would prorate the monthly check you got for that month. 
now they take it, they say, sorry, you didn't live to the first of the month, and they just take it back. It's amazing. <laughs> Accountancy details. Yeah. yeah. Um, that brings me to the question of a person, in essence, is a pauper, or their, their living relatives have, have no funds at all. What what happens uh, then? Uh, it's awful. It's gotten very tough late, the last couple of years because there is more of it. The state provides eleven hundred dollars if someone can prove that they are. I'll use the word indigent. There's no money, mm -hmm. uh, and the funeral bill could not be more than thirty five hundred dollars. But the idea is uh, that other part should be coming from family members. But before they will give up that eleven $1 hundred dollars, where someone doesn't have family members, you have to sh show first off that person has no inc money in a bank account or anything, right. and they're now looking at well, that person didn't, but do they have children? Right. Well, the children have money. They're saying, okay, you pay for your father's funeral. You know, mm -hmm. the funeral. They're trying to get away from giving it out. Completely practically, and we've been getting calls, and we, you know the association talks about it. Um, a nursing home costs so much to be in sure. ten thousand dollars a month, but they've not kept up with it. They've kept this eleven hundred for decades. The idea is uh, to just simply get someone cremated. It's because the state medical examiner on any cremation charges two hundred dollars before anybody can be cremated. So that's coming right out. They don't give you a, a benefit because the person's indigent. Uh, we don't own crematories in Massachusetts. It's a private in industry, so they're for profit. Uh, you can see what I'm saying. It's not easy to do it. Mm -hmm. You try to, but the idea is uh, it's, it's a, you're actually losing money to most degrees. The idea is, and again, uh, the state doesn't want to look at it and say, maybe we should go up because they're, I hate to say, saving money because they're not going to be paying out that $10,000 a month to keep that person in a nursing home. True. And we're not talking with large amounts, but uh, their idea is it looks like they're trying to make it just so someone that's found, you know, homeless in Boston. I mean, they literally have made it so it almost doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. They make it drive through hoops to get get it. Right. In in Boston or in Massachusetts, there still must be unclaimed the bodies. I'm not an expert on that. Okay. What I've always heard of is that at some some point, if they're unclaimed, it the medical examiner's off something like that after, I don't know, I'm not sure how many months, then I believe the state will step in and there's a pauper cemetery, which I don't know where it is, and they do a simple mm -hmm. burial. Turning to veterans for a minute, there are two veterans, Massachusetts veterans cemeteries. Uh, the more famous is on Cape Cod, mm -hmm. uh, just over the Bourne Bridge, mm -hmm. where Rhodes Air Force Base uh, is. Mm -hmm. And the other one is... Agawam. Huh? Agawam. Agawam. Yeah, Agawam. Uh, and and I, I, I've i never been to Agawam, but I would imagine it, it's a very nice uh, mass veteran cemetery. And I gather both you and your wife, uh, if married, uh, can be... If one of you are a yep. veteran, can be can be buried there mm -hmm. in those places. Mm -hmm. Free of charge. They don't. They give you the two graves, and they reserve the grave for the spouse, just in case if they say they didn't want to be there. The the opening, as we call it, the digging of the grave for both is no charge. That cement container, no charge, and it born where we go to because we're within the, the there's a mileage thing, and for this area, the state, you have to use born. Um, there's a granite marker from the government that they give to both the veteran and then they'll make one up for the spouse even if they weren't a veteran. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely no charge. And it's probably the best kept cemeteries, I, I like Forest Hills, but it's <laughs> incredible because to get a job there, most of them are former veterans or at Bourne, they can be, if they're part of the uh, Indian tribe from Mashpee, okay. they get first dibs to get a job there. Right. And they take incredible care and pride in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I always, I have, when someone's a veteran, uh, I always bring it up. And if they haven't got graves, I always give them that, because, especially because of the economics. Sure. And the way it is, and it's not that bad of a ride down no. from where we live. No, from yeah. where we are. It's, no. uh, yeah. it's uh, very yeah. nice. 
yeah. it's avoid the holiday traffic, but on, on a normal time, it's yeah, not far at all. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's special. Yeah. Are there any other special circumstances like that, that in, aside from the veterans that, you know, somebody that may not be aware of that should be considered that are special benefits for? Um, I'm not sure. In, in terms of the, the veterans have that service. Yep. Are there any other special services that people may not be aware of that are, can be applicable or can be available? Not really. No. The, the government doesn't, like we're saying, the, the other only thing the government the, the other, yeah. the 1100, whatever. If a, if a veteran has absolutely no funds, there is, you could go through local veteran services and they will, they seem to have some money will help. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, that's about it. Some, right. We try to take care of our veterans and I know uh, most funeral homes uh, really tried. I've always, because the uh, government was very good to me. I went through college and because uh, of my father mm -hmm. came, he died when I was young and stuff. And I, I went through totally on the GI Bill. We didn't have any money. Okay. So was, I appreciate what they will do for veterans. Sure. But that's about the only group they do. Right. Okay. Good info. Yeah. The death certificate. Mm -hmm. um, do you do you hand them out to the uh, the the people that are making the funeral arrangements, or do people need to go to the town where they die? That's where it's been registered. It, it, uh, in someone that was from Franklin, we'll just keep using Franklin. Uh, a death certificate is if they died, say at Milford Hospital, even it gets registered at the town clerk in Milford, but they send one electronically goes to our town clerk. So they're both places. Uh, we always offer it. We'll it, go down and get them for them. Franklin, by the way, is probably the most reasonable town in the state. That's mm -hmm. five death certificates from this town is thirty dollars. Right. So we always usually go and get them there. But it's on file then there forever. Sure. We're the ones that put it together with the medical information. Yeah. But it's at your town clerk. Now yeah. I I would gather that that if you have insurance policies on on the deceased, mm -hmm. you would need. A death certificate. Mm -hmm. Do you normally need anything else? Do you need a newspaper clipping or something from the funeral home for or? insurance? Uh, for insurance, no. yeah. If they uh, proven you have the policy, and proven then the policy, and then, a, then an actual uh, death certificate from the town clerk of, of town of death, because with that embossed certificate, official you can't seal. give them. You cannot give them a copy. Right. So it's going to have the official card. seal on it. You can send, like, if you're trying to tell a credit card company or somebody, stop this account, the person's passed away. Right. You can Xerox it. But if it's any legal type of thing, like a life insurance, a will, you need the embossed one. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you, do you actually need the physical policy or just... You better numbers? have something you can read the numbers off of because when you call up for the insurance yes. company, you've got to be able to give them the number and they'll look up who is the owner and the beneficiary, and that's who will get the infant forms. So uh, some insurance companies are easier than others I've dealt with, but some of them will actually say, send us a face cover. Mm -hmm. it's, they're all different. It's amazing. Yeah. And they're slow. They're all slow. It's like they're all slow. <laughs> well, they get to keep the money. <laughs> so they take a, it takes a while. Right. They want to make sure they give it out to the right people too. Right. So yeah, there is. Reason it only go, it'll only go to that person. But then, even if you're the right person, it's going to take. It still takes some time. At least a month. Yeah. Is it ever a problem that the owner of the policy might also be the the um, the insured? In other words, if I have a policy that's in my name, Frank Falvey, mm -hmm. right? I'm trying to think how this works now. And I am the insured, then naming the beneficiary would be someone else. Right, correct. So um, the owner of the policy can be the insured because you would be naming someone else as the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Steve, do you have any more? No, I think we covered all the key questions. Clearly, if you can and have the opportunity, I think, to have some plan beforehand, but other than, you know, the event happening, then mm -hmm. coordinating with uh, the funeral home in this case, clearly, or wherever you are, uh, that ha to the extent that you have plans based upon what the deceased had expressed prior, 
that helps, but they can get worked through in terms of this mm -hmm. and choices, uh, plots, cremation, all kinds of decisions can be made um, and will need to be made in order for the services. But um, I think it's like everything. As we get older, we're all getting older. Um, the more information you can leave other people of what to do, not just about funerals, mm -hmm. it's always helpful. Sure. Yep. It really is. Yeah. I, I would say, too, that uh, whole life insurance policies are one way of not only uh, uh, <coughs> protecting if someone passes away, but are a reasonable beginning to save. It's a good way to do it uh, when you're younger and you have a mortgage. Right. Because that's what you need. But the idea is it becomes an kind of uh, like those SBLI. But the issue I've always seen is when you get to be over 70 or 75, suddenly it starts going up. And I remember I did have one once. The idea is if you live to be over 80, it was going to be about $40,000 a year for the premium, and if you made it to 85, they cancel you anyways, <laughs> and they know they're going to have to pay it out. Mm -hmm. But for a young family, young with you a always mortgage, do it. You, you it, definitely should have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 and, um, but uh, Jim, my favorite question to wind up with people is always, what's the question that I haven't asked you that you'd like us to uh, know about or understand? Hmm. It's interesting. I thought you were going to ask, it since you brought that up, why is a nice guy like you doing such a really s sad business <laughs> and, and for 50 years? I thought you'd say, why did you ever do this? That's what I, that's what I would have thought. Mm -hmm. So why is a nice guy like you? <laughs> <laughs> you gave him the segue. <laughs> in a real nutshell, because I kept thinking, why? Because it goes back so long. Because uh, it wasn't what I was expecting to do. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I'm not getting it too much. My father died, came back from World War II, uh, semi-paralyzed, and he died when I was real little. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing it. My mother took over the funeral home to try to get us because we're a real child. Um, I was going to want to always do something else. Luckily, I thought it was everything was helping because my I had an uncle that um, I was going to be his godson and everything else like that. And really crazy story. He joined after World War II a little company called the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> and he got caught somewhere in the Far East, and he's the second star on the wall. He was executed. But his friends, he always kept talking about it, and, um, and me. And they started coming in and started helping and mentoring. So uh, they came up, and we'd have talks when I was in high school. And I had other plans actually to go in the military. And they said, well, first off, you're getting, because I was getting, a, I knew I was getting the GI benefits. And so I was going to just go off and take that. Mm -hmm. I, my degree was in American history, and I was going to do other things. And uh, I had to come back because we were to help my mother from where I was out in Michigan. And um, I suddenly started thinking, OK, I have to go to school for one year and get my license so I can help her a bit, and then I'm going to go off. And then I decided I might want to try it. It seemed like I could. Be, I'm not trying to be. Most funeral directors trust me. Like the uh, Oterry funeral, we're here to help people. The thing is, I just thought because it, it was such a bad rep about how funeral directors mm. were, I started to think, oh, maybe I'll try it a bit. Uh, so I got into it. I made some people that had plans, other plans for me, that had been, as I called them, the mentoring people down the there. Mentoring, right. They were a little surprised and not. They were like, you sure? Because you don't really have to do these things. Mm. And I said. I'm just going to give it a shot, and suddenly the years go by, and then uh, once I got married, uh, then you start thinking, okay, some of these dreams and places I want to go and travel, which I've always wanted to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is, but uh, looking back on it, uh, yeah, maybe I should have gone off and traveled because I think I'd really enjoy it. <laughs> I just come from a vacation. But, uh, it's, it wasn't where I planned on being. I'm thankful the last thing is I've got four kids, I've always said to them, do what makes you happy. You shouldn't just simply do this. Mm -hmm. And they're all in the most variety of jobs. And uh, they're very happy, successful, and I'm thrilled. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what matters. Worked out good. Yeah, that's we, what matters. Because yeah. yeah. you only get, the, like, we had this over, used to have this over our kitchen. This isn't a dress rehearsal. So <laughs> do, it the, do 
do it understanding you're only going to get it this way once. So do mm -hmm. it so you're happy. Right. That's the most important. Okay. Jim. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jim Lee's funeral home. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Steve. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This is uh, Frank Falvey, and we're all wishing you uh, a healthy uh, day and years ahead. Uh, till I see you again with Frank Presents, I want to say uh, God bless and good health. Thank you for watching. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.